Thanks everyone for joining today. I'm Emily Zhang from Cornell. And just a quick warning before I get started, this talk will include discussion of intimate partner violence, domestic violence, stalking, and harassment. I'll be sharing highlights from joint work with my amazing co-authors in which we sought to understand intimate partner surveillance, a form of technology abuse, through an analysis of online forums where would-be abusers are sharing their tools and tactics. If this will be triggering for you, I'll give you a moment now to mute or leave the room. Intimate partner violence, or IPV, is an umbrella term for many forms of violence, including physical or emotional abuse, stalking, harassment, and acted against someone by a current or former intimate partner, so a spouse or significant other. We know that IPV is widespread and causes immense harms. Victims can experience serious and long-lasting traumas that worsen as their abusers get more and more sophisticated. And in the worst cases, IPV can result in physical assault, rape, or even murder. Of all the forms of IPV, we're particularly interested in intimate partner surveillance, or IPS. This is the deliberate monitoring of an intimate partner with or without their knowledge, often levied through a combination of technical and non-technical means. And thanks to a large body of prior work, we know quite a bit about how IPS happens. Studies documenting victims' experiences have shown that digital technologies are increasingly leveraged for abuse. For instance, an abuser might install an app on a victim's phone that monitors their calls and texts, their browsing histories, and their keystrokes. We call this type of app spyware, and it's been the focus of parallel work studying the ecosystems of tools available online in the iOS and Android app stores that enable such IPS. All of this work has led to direct interventions that help victims. For example, the clinical computer security approach discussed in these works by Havren and Freed, in which computer security experts meet with victims one-on-one -on -one to help them improve their security posture. But to better protect victims, we need ways to understand how these attacks develop from the abuser's perspectives. This is the missing piece that no one has yet explored. How do we hear from abusers themselves? Such threat intelligence would help us develop better interventions. It would also inform better threat models, making everyday digital technologies more robust to IPS. And all of this might help prevent IPS attacks long before victims need to seek expert advice. To begin to address this, we conducted the first of its kind study of how abusers are sharing tools and tactics of intimate partner surveillance in publicly available online forums. Through a combination of quantitative measurement and qualitative analysis, we found evidence that for-profit companies are using forums to promote their spyware tools by manipulating their product's SEO. We additionally found that in organic discussion on forums dedicated to infidelity in particular, would-be abusers often come seeking one form of IPS attack and leave supplied with more surveillance attacks with higher levels of sophistication, a pattern we describe as escalation. Finally, our qualitative analysis found evidence of people with technical expertise providing abusers with custom tools, including some people who call themselves security experts. All told, our work frames for the first time how online communities are enabling and often escalating the complexity of abusers' IPS attacks. We began by identifying forums. Through keyword searches for terms like track my girlfriend, we found publicly available forums that seems likely to have IPS relevant content. We then built a scraping pipeline to collect the text and metadata of all posts. To avoid promoting spyware, we've anonymized the forums, but for more detail on each, I'll refer you to the measurements in the paper. Broadly speaking, our forums fall into two categories. First, we had three infidelity forums, Online communities for people who suspect a partner is cheating on them seek support from, the, from others. Infidelity is a known trigger for IPV and IPS, so it aligns with intuition that discussion of specific techniques might also surface in these communities. As we see in this example, on these forums, threads might start by contextualizing an ask for IPS strategies in the context of seeking help for a toxic relationship. We also identified two forums dedicated to discussion of mobile phones, including monitoring techniques like spyware. Posts on these forums tend to consist of straightforward asks for surveillance capabilities. We started our analysis with these. Through our measurements, we found that the cell phone forums might seem to contain organic discussions between abusers, but actually consist largely of spam advertisements for spyware. Take the example here. 
You might have one user start a thread with a straightforward question. How do I track location without an iCloud password? Another user then chimes in with what sounds quite clearly to be spam, naming a specific spyware tool. Our measurements showed that performs DNE, the vast majority of posts consisted of exchanges like these. For one form in particular, we found that 94% of all posts were the same spam text posted by one particular user. We concluded these two forums were likely bloated with spam by the companies whose products were named in the ads in an effort to boost their product's SEO. This type of behavior we suspect is much more widespread and future work might better characterize how much spyware spam is truly out there. So having concluded that the cell phone forums were largely dominated by these commercial interests, we turn to the infidelity forums in our data set, forums A through C. Unlike the spammy patterns found in the cell phone forums, our measurements showed the infidelity forums likely did contain organic abuser interactions. So to more richly characterize them, three members of our research team read and coded hundreds of forum threads containing dark and often disturbing content, stories of infidelity, accounts of IPS, and at times, outright violence. Throughout this process, we met consistently to develop and refine our codebook, to share insights, and simply to provide support. Through this work, we were able to develop powerful learnings not possible through automated analyses alone. And I'll now go through a couple of these. First, we identified what we call a pattern of escalation in the attacks recommended to abusers in these forums. I'll describe a typical interaction. This is a composite example, paraphrased from actual content in our data. We start with the original poster who comes to the forum with suspicions of infidelity, often shared in story format. Hey guys, I read my girlfriend's texts and I think she might be cheating on me with her coworker. From there, they ask the forum how to enact surveillance. The three questions in this toy example illustrate three distinct categories we identified across these requests. Many seek ways to inspect their partner's prior actions, her texts. Some seek ways to continuously monitor their partner's devices, for example, finding out their location at all times. And quite a few within our data seek ways to compromise the privacy of a third party, the suspected affair partner, in this example, the girlfriend's coworker. From there, the community responds. And across these, we found two patterns of interest. First, we saw clear instances where responders discouraged the would-be abuser from surveillance. We call this de-escalation. In our example, the responder says, you've already damaged her trust by reading her texts. What good would reading her emails do? In some cases, though, responders provide the would-be abuser with the surveillance tactic they seek. And some, in fact, escalate the sophistication or severity of the attack. In this example, which contains only minor deviations from text in our data, we see the second responder encouraging the would-be abuser to get a voice-activated recorder and wishing them good luck. Here we see that IPS attacks can surface in a couple of places in the thread. In the initial post, the would-be abuser admits to having conducted surveillance in the past, reading the partner's checks. And in the second response, the forum provides additional resources on how to enact more sophisticated surveillance via a voice-activated recorder. Threads like these form the core of our analysis. We tabulated the attacks that surfaced across them to develop a taxonomy grouping them into four categories. Many of these attacks had been discussed in prior work with victims, but our paper shows for the first time the collaborative nature of how each develops among abusers. First, we have tools requiring physical access. When an abuser needs to get their hands on the target's device and passcode to install, for example, a keylogger or screen recording software. Second, tools not requiring physical access. When an abuser, for example, leverages a shared phone plan or cloud storage to monitor a target's location. Third, we have attacks that involve coercing or tricking the target, catfishing, shoulder surfing, or simply manipulating them into providing total access to, to their digital lives. And finally, many posts in our infidelity forums feature discussion of how to hire a private investigator to monitor a significant other. Our paper contains detailed discussion of each of these attacks, including examples and paraphrased quotes. Through these, we noticed an alarming trend, in particular among categories one and two. We saw that some technically savvy posters, including a handful who profess to work in security professionally, are lending their skills to collaborative creation of these attacks. 
We saw posters sharing code and at times full GitHub repos containing config files and other setup needed to monitor the internet traffic on a home Wi-Fi router. In a few memorable threads, a poster who described themselves as working in security explained to the forum the concept of a man in the middle attack and pointed them to the free tier of a professional security product as an entry level way to mount one. Throughout, posters also offered one on one technical support to first time abusers. And this was pretty alarming to us because while these people may have felt justified helping people who profess to be in relationships that had turned toxic, by providing this level of help on public forums, they made these tools and approaches accessible to anyone on the internet. So to recap, I've described to you what we learned about how abusers in intimate partner surveillance develop their attacks through online communities. I've described how spyware companies use these forums to boost their products SEO, how would-be abusers can be egged on and have their attacks escalate in sophistication in the infidelity forum setting, and how people with above average technical and security expertise are contributing to this escalation by sharing their professional skills in these spaces. Overall, we're confident we've demonstrated how useful these forums can be for informing threat models in IPS. And I'm happy to report our work has already been useful in intervention. Several of us are members of the Clinic to End Tech Abuse, in which we meet with victims and survivors of IPV to assess and improve their security posture. And we've been using the results of this paper to inform how we train new volunteers and how we help victims. This work, though, is not the end of the story. We see compelling future work in a number of areas. First, we think this data set can be used to understand more deeply how people justify abuse. As I've said, we need that better knowledge of abusers' perspectives to better help victims. We're also interested in ways to use large-scale natural language processing to automate the analysis that produced this paper. Taking cues from similar work in cybercrime, we see a role for NLP in easing the burden on human analysts. Recall that this work repeatedly exposed many of us to a lot of dark and disturbing content. We see our data set as a good first step to achieving semi-automated intelligence pipelines for IPS. Our work has also inspired an interest in ways this data can seed investigation of the commercial entities that sell spyware. If we know more about how these companies market their products, we might be able to mount countermeasures that follow the money, so to speak. Similarly, we think there's a way for content moderation on large social media platforms to learn from our work and develop policies that encourage de-escalation of potential abusers rather than the escalation into attacks that we found in our data. Overall, we want to encourage this community in particular to think deeply about the threat model in IPS, as outlined in this and previous works, and take it into account when securing the technologies that we all use every day. And with that, Thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you to my incredible team, and I'll be glad to take any questions.